Hi everyone. So as some of you may know, I am actually in the process of liquidating my rhinestone business. And that being said, before I do disappear, I believe I owe a few people a tutorial on how to make these bracelets that I promised a couple months back and I'm sorry I'm just now getting around to doing. Uh, but these are the leather baseball cuff bracelets I was desashing a couple of months ago. Um, they are adjustable. You can sell them at events, make them for yourselves. The nice part is you're not limited to a baseball theme. You can make them into whatever you want them to be. And please excuse the mess, we're remodeling and I don't have closet doors right now. So um, to start this project, you are going to need, um, first of all, a leather baseball. You will also need your X-Acto knife as well as glue gun. And you're going to need felt in your choice of color. Um, you don't have to use red. I used it just to stick with the baseball theme, but I have made them in other colors as well. I've already pre-cut mine, and I'll, I'll go over how to do that with you as well. You don't need to have this wax, but it's very helpful when you go to put your embroidery floss into the baseball. It keeps the thread from unraveling and getting, I guess, fuzzy. Um, it's just regular paraffin wax. You can buy it at Walmart in big blocks, uh, and it'll last you. I mean, I made dozens and dozens of bracelets with this little tiny piece and it's still almost intact. Um, you will need an embroidery needle um, as well as whatever embellishment or charm that you'd like to put on it. I don't have any more of these baseballs to put on to show you how I put it on but I will give you a description of how to do that when we get to that point. Um, so let's get started. Basically you're going to use your exacto knife. And I promise it's here somewhere. There we go. Please, I cannot stress this enough, do this extremely carefully. I can attest to the fact that I did dozens and dozens of these, and I cannot say that I did not cut myself. Uh, basically, you're going to take your X-Acto knife and very carefully run along the seams. You may have to go over it two or three times because sometimes the seams can be fairly thick. Just make sure that when you're doing that, you are not pulling the blade towards your hand where you're holding it, where it can slip off the stitches and go into your hand. If I did it, it does not feel good. Um, so basically, once you have done that and cut all of the stitches off and made sure that they're loose for the most part, a little trick that my business partner came up with was to take a spoon. You can take a teaspoon or a tablespoon and get it under the edge once the ball has started to separate and just gently move the spoon farther and farther as it curves with the ball the leather will come off of the interior of the ball you may need to pull a few of the threads off the back of it because they are glued to the threaded core um, just make sure that when you are doing this and removing the leather from the ball that you're doing it slowly and gently you don't want to tear the leather on the back um, it's not going to be seen but it does make it a little bit more more uneven if you do get a bad tear on the inside of the leather um, if it tears a little bit, it's not the end of the world, just try and avoid it. So I've already separated one, so I've got this here. This is what your finished part is going to look like. You've got, you'll notice two parts to the ball. This section that goes around, this part does not have any writing on the centerpiece. This is the part that I use for my bracelets. There's the other section that goes around. This has the ball's logo. You can use this for your bracelets. I chose not to just because I don't like the look of the writing. And if you put charms there, you're still going to have the writing showing up behind your charm or whatever you put on there, unless it's something very large. So I actually take this other half and I make some keychains, which is fairly simple. And if we have time, I'll do a tutorial for that too. Um, now that I have my leather, I'm going to take my embroidery needle. Now this is the floss I was talking about. It's just regular embroidery floss. You are going to hold it. Um, I used about, I'm going to say a little over, I want to say about four feet. Sorry, that's that my little puppy barking at me because he's not paying attention. Um, you're going to want to take about probably four feet, maybe a little bit more just to be on the safe side. Um, it's not expensive, so if you have a little bit of waste, it's not the end of the world. Hold it, doubled over. 
and then hold it up against your wax. Hold your thumb on the wax and just pull it through so that you're getting an even coating on your string. Um, obviously, this is a tiny section, this is an example, but you'll just pull that through maybe two or three times until you've got a good even coating on the string so that it doesn't unwind as you're pulling it through the ball. Um, basically, at this point, let me get my needle out. The way that I preferred to do this, just to make it a little bit easier for finishing and getting it started, Piper. Okay. We'll have a visitor here. Uh, the way that you're going to want to get this started is pull it through so that you have your loose ends closer to the end of the needle. Run it through one of the holes. The nice part is the holes are already there. Pull all the way through so that you just have the loop on one side and put your needle back through the loop. So you can just do a little slip there. You've got your first stitch on the ball and then you can just start going all the way around the ball. Um, the one thing that you do need to be careful with here, and I'll do a couple stitches just so I can show you what I'm talking about as you get started. Make sure that your stitching is going in the same direction as the stitching that was previously there. And I'm trying to do a couple of more here so that makes more sense. Um, but if you, you'll be able to tell if you're going the wrong way because your thread will not easily slip right into the grooves that are already there from the previous stitching. You can see, I'll try and get it up closely there, um, you can see here that it's automatically falling into the little grooves that are already there from the stitches. Um, this one, you're always going to have a little bit of an overlap because that's where you're starting. When you're done, you're going to just go all the way around. Make sure that you're, like I said, just make sure you're going in the right direction where your stitches fall into the groove properly. When you get back to the beginning, what you're going to do is, and I've lost my thread here, What you're going to do when you get back to the beginning, I've just got one on my side of my thread just so you can see how to do this here, is um, once you've finished off, like I said, you're going to put your needle up underneath three or four stitches on the back side. And then you can just pull your thread through. You don't have to knot it or anything. Just make sure you pull it all the way Piper. Pull it all the way through, and that's going to hold your thread in place. And you can pull it in towards the center a little bit so it's not on the edge. And then when you're cutting your thread off, leave maybe an inch or so. So you can go ahead and snip it off, and you'll be good with that. So after you have it completely stitched around, and I've got this one as an example here. Um, it's a little bit different theme. So you can see I've got my threads tucked on the inside. I left them a little bit longer here. Uh, but I decided to add some bead embellishments and use a different colored floss here. Still the same idea, just doesn't necessarily regulate it to being baseball. Um, so what you are going to do next with this project is add the metal cup, which is something that you don't have to do, but I do recommend it. It makes it a little bit easier, as you can see, with this cuff. You can flex it, you can bend it, it fits pretty much any wrist size, it's very diverse. Some of them that people make have a bean sewn here, as well as a little loop so that you can hook it. That doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room for different sizes, which is why I like the metal cuff. I picked up the metal cuffs on eBay, I don't have the name of the seller, or I'll provide it for you. Um, the cuff is basically just half inch by six inch, and it's just a, a metal cuff bracelet, and they're, they're pretty common. Um, once you have your bracelet ready for that, you're going to take your hot glue gun, and you're just going to put one straight line all the way down the center of your bracelet, and that's going to be the core of it. Hmm. 
and if my dog doesn't steal the show again, I'm back. Um, that is going to be the core of it. I don't have any of those with me at the moment, so I'm just going to go as an example so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, and I'm sorry, before we...